that's what I'm going to be building. I uh, chose to go with the Ryzen 5 3600. I've started on the Be Quiet computer build. Hello folks, welcome to NetCruiser Tech. Started on the Be Quiet computer build, the Ryzen PC. The motherboard is installed and I've gone with the MSI B450A Pro and I've got it mounted in and I've got the new power supply hooked up. This is the Be Quiet 600 watt modular power supply so it only has a couple of wires plugged in. Right now there is no CPU and no RAM installed. It only has the bare essentials so that you can get power to it. So I've got the power connector here, I've got the CPU connector here, I have a couple of other power button leads hooked up, uh, the USB 3.0 header, the bare essentials where I can put power to the board and do a BIOS update. One of the reasons why I chose this motherboard, the B450A Pro, is because of this feature, BIOS flashback. These B450 boards were not designed for third gen Ryzen, and that's what I'm gonna be building. I uh, chose to go with the Ryzen 5 3600. This motherboard has a key feature which allows me to do a BIOS update before installing the CPU or the RAM, and that's by this magical little switch right here. And all I should have to do is install a USB key that has the BIOS on it that is required to run Ryzen third gen. to install this into the port that accepts the BIOS flash, which is usually one that's closest to the button. Make sure that the power works, so I'm gonna power it on. Fan spin, light, and so now I should be able to press this button and do a BIOS update. Since there's no CPU and no memory and no way of seeing what's happening, you just kind of have to trust that it's working. I would say if you are gonna do this upgrade, make sure you get a USB stick that has a light on it, because otherwise you have no idea what's happening. I had to change USB sticks, and then now the BIOS flash is actually working, and that's the light on the motherboard blinking to indicate it's working. And then I'll put the CPU and the RAM in, and the hard drive, and hook it up to a monitor. I'm gonna put a video card in this machine too. I'm kind of taking it as a bit of a budget build. I bought RAM on sale. I'm going to be on Prime Day, I got this RAM, uh, XPG Gamix. Uh, 16 gig, it says eight, but there's two sticks in it. So it's 16 gig DDR4, 3200 megahertz RAM. I recently picked up the cheapest M.2 NVMe SSD I've ever seen, uh, Lexar NM600. This is actually pretty well rated and it gets very fast speeds, over 2000 megabytes a second read and write, um, but it has no DRAM cache. So it uses some of your system RAM to uh, for the caching table. But other than that, it's uh, super, super good value uh, I got it on sale at Canada Computers for like $64 for a 480 gig. And then the CPU, Ryzen 3600 CPU, as this seems to be the best bang for buck uh, available in 2019 right now, where it's six core, 12 thread, and it boosts pretty high. So I'm excited to try this and see how it compares to my Intel machine, which is uh, turned off right over there. For a video card, since this CPU does not have integrated graphics, you have to run a discrete video card. And I'm going to be putting in my uh, RX 580 four gigabyte that I had in my old machine, because I've recently upgraded the video card in my gaming machine to a Radeon Vega 56 Strix, which I have not made a video about, but uh, I probably should because it's getting about twice the performance of my RX 580. Anyway, for the new Ryzen build, just to get it booted up and get it tested, I'm gonna be using the RX 580, then we'll do some benchmarks tests of CPU performance between the Intel that I have and this new AMD, and then we'll get into swapping video cards back and forth and see what that's like. All right, guys, I'm gonna continue on with this build. The DDR4 RAM is installed. I'm just getting ready to put the uh, CPU in right now. And these sockets are keyed, so you wanna be looking at the side that has the little square on it which is up top here when you're putting in your CPU. So I've got my CPU here ready to go. I've got my NVMe drive. And one of the other benefits of the new Ryzen CPUs is you do get a CPU cooler, although this CPU cooler seems very small for a six core 12 thread processor. It does come with thermal paste already applied. So just make sure you don't stuff your finger into that when you're getting out of the box. But uh, I might put on, well, let's do a test with the stock cooler, see how hot it actually gets. And then I will be putting a better CPU cooler on it after. But for right now, let's get the CPU put into the socket. Pick it up carefully because you have about a million different pins on this. So you want to make sure you don't break any. And you're looking for the side that has the square, which is 
this side down here has the square on it, so that's the side that goes to the top. I would like to just get it so that I've got it in the proper orientation and then flip it 180 degrees and drop it in. So I believe we've got it right. Squares on this side, I'm gonna flip it. That's it, just drop it in, give it a little wiggle, close the latch. Uh, I like to give those off a little wipe with a cloth and some alcohol. Just to make sure that if you were touching it, you know, your finger oils are on there, so you want to wipe that off. And then you put your CPU cooler on. Now, the CPU cooler that you get with the new Ryzen systems uh, is a directly screws into the backplate style, so you do have to take these mounts off first. This is because this is designed for the older style, so you just take those four screws off, take off those plastic pieces, and then you can mount the CPU directly to the backplate, which is included in these boards and is made out of metal, so. Right on, we're, we're getting close to being able to boot it up for the first time. Now for the NVMe drive, which I'm going to install this Lexar NM600, is looking for a socket that looks like that. And uh, depending on how old or new your motherboard is, it'll have different cutouts. For this one, it's got the M key, which is NVMe, and, uh, or M key, I think they call it. So all you do is you put it in on, an, on a slight angle until it clicks in place and then Screw it down. Now, the thing that I think is stupid about NVMe drives is that they never include the screw. And the screw comes with your motherboard, but you usually only get one of them. And it's an extremely small screw, so you have to make sure you don't lose it. And you have to put it in with like a little jeweler screwdriver. I just noticed now, but this standoff was in the wrong position on this motherboard from the factory. So it came in the 120 millimeter length, and I just moved it over to the, to the 80. It's just by hand. You can just unscrew it and move it over. Now I can put my screw in. It's very important that you keep that standoff. If for some reason it didn't have the standoff on it um, in the package with your motherboard, you might have another one. Cleaning the oils off of the thermal interface pad. Now I can remove the old style CPU standoff. As soon as I remove these four screws, the back plate's going to fall off and then I'll have to hold it back in place. Try not to have them drop on you. Those stock pieces removed, just wanna make sure your back plate is up in place. You pretty much have to hold it there while you screw in the new CPU cooler from the other side. Now this CPU cooler is the stock one that comes with the 65 watt processors and it looks pretty small, but I do wanna test it from a thermals perspective to see is it a good value. I mean, it is a freebie in the box. The uh, CPU paste already applied and it only goes in on two orientations. The, uh, the screws have to face the mount this way or this way and you wanna have your cable routed to your fan controller best you can. On this board, the CPU fan controller is up at the very top. I'm likely going to install it this way. Uh, oh, you got your RAM to worry about too. I'm likely gonna install it this way and then route the cable around, I think. Yeah. As soon as you're able to get one started, then you should be okay and it'll hold itself there. When you're doing something like this, you wanna make sure you, you just slowly Go around, screwing down each side. Make sure that you're getting a grab on each side. Okay, then once you know it's started, then lay it down on its back and torque each bolt down. Also, make sure to remember you plug in your fan controller as it's going to go around up here and plug into this port right up here. All right, in order to keep with this somewhat of a workstation aesthetic, I'm going to be putting in the RX 580 by MSI. This has no uh, LEDs, RGB or anything. It has n not even a backplate on it, but this is the MSI overclocked armor RX 580. It's actually a pretty strong card. So I'm going to install this now and then we're almost ready to boot it up, I do believe.